view this the same as the flu. When somebody sneezes, I mean, I try and bail out as much as possible. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the most foolish decisions and biggest blunders ever made by American presidents. I misled people, including even my wife. Number 10, Afghanistan withdrawal. Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Trump's 2020 deal with the Taliban, which promised a full U.S. withdrawal, was an abject failure in diplomacy. This morning, the president is facing mounting scrutiny after planning and then abruptly canceling a secret meeting with the Afghan government and the Taliban that was set to take place Sunday at Camp David, just days before the anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Not only did Trump initially invite the Taliban to Camp David on 9-11, but the deal itself was a mess. It set a hard deadline for U.S. withdrawal without securing long-term peace, effectively sidelining the Afghan government and weakening its position. Trump also agreed to release thousands of imprisoned Taliban fighters, setting the stage for chaos. Biden's administration compounded these issues by mismanaging the 2021 withdrawal. So in what way has the U.S. withdrawal impacted your job as national security advisor? Well, um, we weren't expecting it to come this soon. Uh, um, so there hasn't really been uh, a proper transition. Intelligence failures underestimated the Taliban's rapid resurgence. The withdrawal quickly evolved into an evacuation. The Afghan government collapsed, causing a humanitarian crisis that left Americans, allies, and Afghan civilians in peril amidst the Taliban's swift takeover. Number nine, the War of 1812, James Madison. James Madison's decision to declare war on Britain was an utter disaster. On June 18, 1812, President James Madison signed the declaration against Britain, despite contention about the issue coming from both the House and Senate. He was driven by a desire to defend American maritime rights and his greedy ambition to annex Canada. Madison grossly overestimated the capabilities of America's military while underestimating British strength. The defeats were plenty and humiliating for the Americans. America was not prepared for war, thanks to poor infrastructure in the West and internal divisions between Federalists and Republicans. The U.S. invasion of Canada swiftly failed. British forces eventually marched on Washington, D.C., setting it ablaze in 1814. The war disrupted trade, hurt the economy, and created political turmoil. The Treaty of Ghent reverted things back, mostly, to how they were before the combat. Though the Treaty of Ghent ended the conflict in 1815, it resolved none of Madison's grievances. As a result, the War of 1812 was both a failure and utterly pointless. Number 8. Kansas-Nebraska Act – Franklin Pierce America's early history is forever tarnished by the moral stain of slavery. It is marked by one ridiculous compromise after another. The Missouri Compromise of 1820 maintained a balance between free and slave states. But while the Missouri Compromise limited the spread of slavery, it did nothing to abolish slavery in states that already had it. The Compromise of 1850 temporarily quelled tensions by admitting California as a free state and strengthening the Fugitive Slave Act. It was Franklin Pierce's support for the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, however, that highlighted the futility of compromise. So in effect, what the Kansas-Nebraska Act did was destabilize the understandings that were part of the territorial question. Pierce and Congress reignited conflict by allowing these territories to choose whether to allow slavery via popular sovereignty. It was never clear who was going to decide. Did the first 10 people into a territory decide? This decision dismantled the Missouri Compromise and sparked Bleeding Kansas, a series of skirmishes instigated by pro-slavery guerrillas in Missouri. Number 7. Annexing the Philippines – William McKinley Fresh off a victory in the Spanish-American War, President William McKinley was looking to extend America's sphere of influence into the South Pacific. In 1898, he decided to annex the Philippines, believing it was America's duty to quote-unquote civilize and Christianize the islands. President William McKinley even sent out a telegram that said, quote, There must be no joint occupation with the Filipinos. The Filipinos and all others must recognize the military occupation and authority of the United States. He also pitched the invasion as a means of expanding America's strategic military and economic interests in Asia. 
Unfortunately, the resultant Philippine-American War turned out to be a bloody, miserable quagmire. There were hundreds of thousands of casualties, the overwhelming majority of which were Filipino civilians. There were also reports of American soldiers robbing civilians of everything they owned of value. The fierce Filipino insurgency quickly eroded American support for the war. The War Department even conducted a major investigation. When Elwell Otis found out about his soldiers writing to the media, he freaked out. Worse, it created long-term resentment towards America in the Philippines that still reverberates today. Number 6. Inaction During the Great Depression – Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover in the 1920s, President Calvin Coolidge leaned into a laissez-faire philosophy, eschewing government intervention and espousing deregulation. The 30th president was so committed to small government, for example, that it sometimes eclipsed his humanity. He failed to support the agricultural sector, leading to widespread rural bank failures and farm foreclosures. His tax cuts worsened wealth inequality, and easy credit left many Americans in deep debt laying the groundwork for the Great Depression. Enter Herbert Hoover, who clung to the belief that market forces alone could correct the crisis. So what did Hoover do? Not enough. Refusing to provide direct relief or intervene aggressively, Hoover underestimated the scale of the collapse. The Depression quickly worsened as unemployment soared and banks failed. Hoover's inaction deepened the economic catastrophe, amounting to widespread suffering. Despite having won in a landslide in 1928, he was swiftly kicked to the curb four years later. No surprise here, Franklin Roosevelt won, becoming the 32nd president in American history. He received 472 electoral votes and 57.4% of the popular vote. It was the first win for the Democrats since 1916. Number five, failing to protect black people in the South, Ulysses S. Grant and Rutherford B. Hayes. The 1876 presidential election was one of the worst political disasters in American history, leading to more than a century of discrimination and violence. As returns came in on the evening of November 7th, the nation held its breath. Much of it lies at the feet of President Ulysses Grant. He failed to effectively use American troops to protect black voters from violent white supremacist groups like the KKK. The nation was thrown into chaos. These groups used murder and violence as tools of stochastic white nationalist terror, severely corrupting the election process. Just 11 years after the Civil War, it looked like it could start all over again. Amid this chaos, Samuel Tilden won the popular vote, but contested results in several states led to an electoral dispute. Ultimately, Rutherford B. Hayes struck a corrupt bargain to secure the presidency. He agreed to completely withdraw federal troops from the South, ending Reconstruction and abandoning black people in the South for generations. Number 4. Mishandling COVID – Donald Trump The COVID-19 pandemic wrecked havoc all over the planet, resulting in massive death tolls and widespread long-term economic devastation. And the question is, will it get worse or will it get better? Right now the map is troubling. In America, President Donald Trump's willful mismanagement made it worse than it needed to be. He began with consistent and repeated misinformation about the virus's severity. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. He spent weeks throwing up roadblocks to testing, wanting to downplay official numbers while the virus spread. He dismissed expert recommendations like mask wearing and social distancing and promoted unproven treatments like ivermectin. He even suggested ingesting bleach. And then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Trump refused to implement a coordinated federal response and slowed aid to Democratic-leaning states, leading to overwhelming hospitals, economic collapse, and widespread job losses. Some 4.4 million people applied for unemployment benefits last week. That brings the tally for the last five weeks to more than 26 million Americans. Over 1 million Americans died. The Lancet has since estimated that 40% of U.S. COVID deaths were preventable. Number three, the Vietnam War, Lyndon B. Johnson. In July 1965, President Lyndon B. Johnson made the critical decision to double U.S. troops in Vietnam, making it a full-fledged American war. While he expressed grave doubts in private, he championed the war in public. I do think our cause is just. 
I do think our purposes and objectives are beyond uh, uh, any question. Johnson believed that withdrawal would signal weakness to the world, damaging U.S. credibility. He rejected full mobilization, providing troops incrementally to protect his domestic agenda. His choice failed at controlling events on the ground. I think that even if it were a success, we still have no business being there, and that's the important point. The war would prove to be a costly mistake, with more than 58,000 American soldiers, sailors, and airmen killed or missing. Americans' trust in their government was irrevocably damaged. For it seems now more certain than ever that the bloody experience of Vietnam is to end in a stalemate. Vietnam suffered tremendous casualties and destruction. It would take an entire generation for the nation to recover. Number two, Watergate, Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. The decision to break into the DNC offices at Watergate was, in retrospect, utterly insane and completely unnecessary. Mr. Nixon says emphatically that the White House is in no way involved in the burglary and bugging of the Democratic headquarters, and he'll have no further comment on that matter. Richard Nixon was a relatively popular incumbent who would go on to win re-election in an overwhelming landslide. Nixon surrounded himself with sycophants who followed his paranoid lead, born of Nixon's deep-seated insecurities. He saw enemies everywhere, even when he had all the power. He always saw people in the shadows, and his motto, I believe, was do unto others before they have a chance to do unto you. The subsequent scandal exposed a culture of corruption that annihilated his legacy. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Gerald Ford's controversial choice to pardon Nixon proved to be an equally disastrous mistake. My conscience tells me clearly and certainly that I cannot prolong the bad dreams that continue to reopen a chapter that is closed. It solidified a dangerous precedent, a tacit acceptance of misconduct in the White House. A generation later, this precedent helped Donald Trump avoid accountability for his alleged crimes committed while president. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Alien and Sedition Acts, John Adams. Adams attacked his critics with a pair of dangerous, undemocratic, and unpopular laws. By the law's expiration, U.S. federal courts prosecuted no less than 26 individuals under the Sedition Act nearly all of them editors of Republican newspapers who opposed the Adams administration. The Iran-Contra Affair, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan illegally sold arms to Iran to fund right-wing nationalist Nicaraguan rebels. A few months ago, I told the American people I did not trade arms for hostages. My heart and my best intentions still tell me that's true, but the facts and the evidence tell me it is not. Clinton-Lewinsky scandal, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was impeached for lying under oath about an affair with a White House intern. It constituted a critical lapse in judgment and a personal failure on my part for which I am solely and completely responsible. The Bay of Pigs, John F. Kennedy. Kennedy greenlit a failed CIA-funded invasion of Cuba by Cuban expat rebels. Let me just say about these uh, four uh, men, they were serving their country, the uh, flight that cost them their lives was a volunteer flight. Internment of Japanese Americans, Franklin Roosevelt. FDR gave in to racist fears by interning innocent Japanese American families during World War II. More than two thirds of those people were native born American citizens. In the rush of relocation, they were forced to abandon or sell their homes and businesses, leaving behind their friends and communities that they love. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. The Iraq War and Mission Accomplished – George W. Bush George W. Bush's decision to invade Iraq in 2003 is arguably the worst decision ever made by an American president. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. Two decades later, his own party has overwhelmingly rejected the choice as foolish in retrospect. Driven by a mix of neoconservative ideology and personal motivations, 
Bush plunged headfirst into a decade-long quagmire. I am certain that abandoning or dr drastically curtailing our efforts will bring failure. Bush was convinced by his warmongering advisors that America would be greeted as liberators. They also believed the war would trigger a wave of democratic revolutions across the Middle East. They toppled the government quickly, leading to Bush's infamous mission accomplished speech. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. That's when the disaster began, with years of bloody insurgency. The Iraqis are probably wondering how in the hell are they supposed to believe in a system that we forced fed them when our system doesn't even work. The war cost more than one trillion dollars, claiming thousands of American and hundreds of thousands of Iraqi lives. American presidents are just people, which means history is replete with blunders, goofs, and stupid choices. Let us know which presidential mistake shocked you the most in the comments below. May God bless our country and all who defend her. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.